Today, the VT lives on in Carson City at the Nevada State Railroad Museum. The people who run the historic VT equipment in Carson City face some of the same challenges as the original VT crews. The Virginia and Truckee Railroad raised money and incorporated in 1868. On March 2, 1868, the Articles of Association were drawn up. From the start, the plan was to connect the Central Pacific Railroad in Reno to the Comstock Load in Virginia City. There was $1,000 of stock issued for each mile of the proposed railroad. William Sharon and D.O. Mills were prominent v and directors whose names live on in history. In the early days of the Comstock Load, Teamsters were used to haul the gold and silver ore to the mills of Carson Valley. As ore became harder to find, the cost of transportation limited the miners' profits. The railroad was created to control the cost of transportation. On the Secretary of State's document is the Nevada State Seal from the 1860s. There was a controversy about the seal. People thought the smoke from the train and the mill should not blow in different directions. While well, here in Windy, Nevada, this was possible, today's state seal has the smoke blowing the same way. While most people think the VNT revolved around Virginia City, Carson City was very important from the start. The locomotive shops were built in Carson City and lasted until the late 1900s. Originally, the line connecting Virginia City and Carson City was completed in 1870. After 1880, Mills, Bliss, and Yarrington founded the Carson and Colorado Narrow Gauge Railroad. The CNC connected at Moundhouse to service more active mines further south. By 1906, a new line of the VNT ran south to Minden. Originally built to haul ore, the VNT took on the characteristics of a public utility. By 1872, the link to Reno was done, and the VNT connected the Central Pacific to Virginia City. Many of the names of towns that sprang up along the line are still familiar: Franktown, Washoe City, Steamboat, and Huffacres. In addition to the Reno connection to the Central Pacific, the Nevada-California-Oregon Railway Depot in Reno provided a connection to the points north on the NCO. By 1904, with H.M. Yarrington as the superintendent, the Virginia and Truckee ran regular freight service plus two passenger trains per day. The express train moved passengers between Reno and Virginia City in roughly three hours. Before the Minden line in 1906, passengers at Carson City could catch a stagecoach to Tahoe, Gardnerville, Minden, Alpine, and Mono counties in California. At Mound House, the Carson and Colorado would take passengers to stage connections to Bodie, Bridgeport, and Cerro Gordo Mining District. The VNT made many rich, but also had far-reaching economic consequences beyond northern Nevada. Money flowed to employees like the master mechanic, apprentices, hostlers, machine men, melters, molders, handlers, laborers, carpenters, and of course, the engineers, firemen, brakemen, and conductors of the train crew. The Bank of California owned many mines and helped finance the Virginia and Truckee. Money flowed to San Francisco. In fact, the Comstock helped make San Francisco a world-class city. Money from the Virginia and Truckee went to many businesses, some with very familiar names. Rand McNally is one, today known as an auto-oriented mapmaker. Before the auto, their focus was on railroad supplies and cartography. Charles Friend, a Prussian immigrant, sold watches in Carson City and was later named as the first director of the Nevada Weather Service in 1887. H.S. Crocker Printing Company started in Sacramento and moved to San Francisco. H.S. Crocker was the brother of Charles Crocker, one of the Central Pacific's Big Four. Huntington and Hopkins were two of the Big Four who planned the Central Pacific. The Big Four met in Sacramento at the Huntington Hopkins store to plan the Transcontinental Railroad. Today, the store is part of Old Sacramento. The Barney and Smith Car Manufacturing Company was established in Dayton, Ohio in 1849. Because there was no railroad in Dayton at the time, 
Barney and Smith's first cars were sent out on canals. Carson City was also home to the Virginia and Truckee's sandstone roundhouse built by Carson City founder Abraham Curry. In the foreground, we see the number 12 Genoa, a 440 favorite of the VNT engineers. This photograph was taken in Carson City in 1880 and shows the number 11 Reno locomotive. The antlers mounted on the front of the locomotive show us an interesting custom. Perhaps because locomotives replaced horses, engineers associated the operating characteristics with various animals. The rack of antlers is associated with speed and agility. Wrecking car number 57 is in operation today at the Nevada State Railroad Museum. Built in 1874, it was converted to wrecking car number 57 in 1923. Shown in the Carson City Yards, this is the second number 25, built by Baldwin in 1905. It hauled passengers from Reno to Virginia City until 1932. Then it primarily worked between Carson City and Virginia City. This was the train that pulled the last scheduled run from Virginia City in 1938. The number 25 is now at the Nevada State Railroad Museum. Notice in this photograph, the number 25 has a star instead of antlers. Number 25 was sold to a movie studio and starred in more than 15 movies, the best known being Apache from 1954 with Burt Lancaster. The star of Living Steam is the number 22 Inyo, a Baldwin 440. The Inyo is one of the oldest operating locomotives in North America. Inyo is an Indian word meaning dwelling place of a great spirit. Built in 1875, the Inyo is the star of the Nevada State Railroad Museum in Carson City. Originally the switching engine at Gold Hill, the number 22 Inyo ran passenger service from Reno to Virginia City in the 1890s. The Inyo was also a movie and TV star. It appeared in many movies including Union Pacific, Last Train from Gun Hill, The Great Locomotive Chase, The Texans, Whispering Smith, and McClintock. Well that's it for our look back on V&T history. This came from a DVD that I produced. The rest of the DVD shows a day with uh, Lee Hobold and Kevin Owens steaming up the Inyo, and it's pretty interesting. There are some links on the screen to some trailers that you can watch to see the rest of the content, uh, at least samples of it. And if you actually want the DVD, it's currently priced at $7.49 on Amazon, but I don't set the price, so I can't guarantee that's what you'll see. Just search Amazon for Living Steam Virginia Truckee and you'll find it pretty quick. Thanks.